Man, so today, in this video, what we got going on is I do some funky stuff to get the e-brake working in here. We say goodbye to the 1988 LS Swap Honda Accord that I have had for over 10 years, and we get the front end pretty much finalized. Somewhat finalized, really good stuff. Let's get started. And now, you're watching the cheers, laughter, and tears of joy because we finally beat Medicare. Channel of YouTube, welcome to Bodhi Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So right now we are back on the El Camino, the Honda swapped all wheel drive body swap El Camino. We have an El Camino. We have an all wheel drive manual Honda C Honda. We have an all wheel drive manual Honda CRV. That's what we got going on. So since the floor of the CRV was extended, we made up for that as far as structurally. Structurally, we are all good. The front wheels are in the right spot. The back wheels are in the right spot. But with extending it, we kind of need to extend some other things. Not kind of, we do need to extend some other things. I'm talking brake lines, fuel lines, e-brake cable, wiring, all of that needs to be addressed in order for this to be a functioning car once again. And we have to address all of those things because the floor got longer, so everything else naturally needs to get longer. So I'm gonna wanna go ahead and get underneath the car, get all of that knocked out really quickly. You don't wanna just see me laying on my back doing all that stuff. Then we will move into wiring, and I will see if this thing can fire up. I don't need uh, the brakes to work in order for it to fire up. And then after that, We'll kind of just blow through that. Then I want to show you exactly what I'm going to do to extend the e-brake cable mechanism. The cables are going to stay where they are. The mechanism is going to get extended. So we'll get into that in a second. And just like that, we actually got really lucky. So I did all the brake lines, fuel lines, all of that stuff. Now with the wiring, it used to kind of go in the back, hit a hard 90 and then plug in. Now we can kind of just jog out and we can still make it. Luckily, I did not have to extend any of the wiring. So let's go ahead and see if this thing is going to fire up. Let's do the quick release battery cable. We wanna leave that nice and loose because I like it being quick released for right now. Let's see. Oh, and also back there we have the 1988 LS swapped Honda Accord. Any minute now that is going to be getting shipped off to Kansas. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with that in a little bit. All right, that's good. I hear some stuff going on. Oh uh, yeah, I cut the exhaust. When I extended it, I cut the exhaust off. So now it sounds like a real ricer, baby. Ricer El Camino. That doesn't happen too often. And then also, I forgot to mention earlier, the drive shaft is gonna have to be extended. So essentially right now, we are a front wheel drive El Camino. Let's see. All the Honda boys are gonna go crazy and be confused. So we're definitely gonna have to address that. It fired right up. So we are definitely gonna have to address that exhaust. So I wanna put dual exhaust on this thing, like real uh, G-body style. I want it to look cool, even though it's going to be uh, possibly turbo Honda. In the end, well, definitely Honda, possibly turbo. Now, the next thing that I wanna go into, since the brakes currently are not working, since I didn't bleed them out, I wanna make sure my e-brake works. So the way that I'm gonna do that is by extending the mechanism rod. The cables themselves can come through where they are as long as I extend this one rod. And the way that I'm going to do that is we just have this M6 by one all thread right here that I'm going to cut a section out of in order to extend the rod. Let me uh, let me get in the car and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So what we have right here is we have the cable and this mechanism is threaded. This threaded mechanism used to go in this guy right here, which is also threaded. So we have an M6 by one all thread, which matches the thread right here. So what I ended up doing is I just welded in this little piece of plate steel. So that's going to go right there. This is our extension piece. This extension piece is roughly the length that we extended everything by, and this is also adjustable. So we need to get this guy to screw into that guy right there, just like that. And I could have welded this all thread to the other thread and put it together in that way, but we don't need to because we have this little coupling nut right here. So we're going to Crank down on this, lock it in, then with this one right here, we are going to do the same thing, lock it in. Now we have adjustability right here, 
just like we had adjustability on this thread, I still have the same amount of adjustability and all of the mechanisms right here to adjust it. So we're going to just leave it a little bit loose. Let's go ahead and drive these in here. And uh, excuse all this rust and whatnot that I'm sitting on. That's just the nature of taking some time from one project to do another project. Stuff gets to be a little bit rusty if it's not primed. We'll treat this and get it all and get it all sorted eventually. So, as you can see, we got the handle right here. As you lift up the handle, that pulls these cables. That's possibly a little tight, but ah, ah. but she's working exactly like she needs to couple clicks up we did not have to extend the physical cables themselves because we extended the mechanism now this will all be covered and worked in there and so that's really good to go one more thing knocked off the list so we can keep it moving this is becoming a functional car again really good ah. So now that we have some of the interior coming together, I mean, I'm kind of just seeing what fits, what needs to change or anything else like that. All of these uh, floors are going to have to get primed and finished out, seam sealed, sound deadening, carpet. But like I said, I kind of just want to see what we're doing and where we're at. So keeping up with the theme with that, I have some front end parts sitting on the shelf. I want to go ahead and take them down, see if they fit, see if I need to order anything else because I got headlights for it. I think there's kind of like an adjustment piece in between there that I might be missing. This is kind of like a dry fit all of this is going to have to come off before paint obviously because I'm not just gonna want to mask it off and usually you would think why don't you just go ahead and paint it and then put it on but right now we're going through the stage where I need to get stuff figured out I don't want to figure out stuff after I get it painted the only thing I want to do after I get it painted is put it together so let's go ahead and check out that grill throw it on the front end see if we need anything this thing is really coming together. So my suspicion was correct. I am missing a headlight bucket in order to sit the actual light in, but we have the lower light, we have the little bezel over here, and we have the grill, everything matching on the other side. So this is really coming together. We also have the custom front bumper that I did, or the OEM front bumper narrowed. So that is going to look really good on here. I still need to get that mounted and finalized. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do next because I am waiting on a text from the driver that is going to be picking up the 1988. The LS swapped Honda Accord, the last giveaway car, like I said, that thing's going over to Kansas. So I'm going to be meeting him at a shopping center near me, and I'm going to be riding my longboard back home. They didn't want to come pick it up in the neighborhood because there's nowhere for them to turn around. And I'm waiting for the rain. I've got a little bit of anxiety that's preventing me from moving forward with doing stuff. You know how it goes, or you don't. So we'll just have to see what's next. Come on. All right, so here we are. The car is going to be dropped off. Everything is looking good to go. I got with the driver, he's happy with everything. So that guy is gonna go over there en route to Kansas, somewhere in Kansas. It'll be there in about two or three days and we are good to go. And it is a little bit surreal. I've had this car for about 13 years. I drove this car to high school. Then it became the LS swapped Honda Accord. Then I didn't use it at all. And now hopefully we will see some really good use out of it. So it is what it is, man. Happy to get rid of it because it's going to lead to a lot of opportunities for me to do other stuff. So let's go ahead and get back to the shop, get what else we need to do figured out, 
and say bye to the Accord for one last time. All right, so now that the Accord is gone, man, that is a huge weight lifted off of my shoulder. I mean, I'm a little bit sad that the car is gone, but also the last few days I've been working on the car, getting everything sorted. Just some of the things that I never really addressed because I was cool with it. I did not want the new owner to have to deal with some of those things. For example, I had to tighten the e-brake, make sure that would work. I had to rework the hood scoop, had a crack in it. So I reworked that, repainted that, put a new starter in it because it was starting really slow because it had been sitting, new batteries in there, new plugs. I just went over the whole thing and all of that is a huge distraction for me because I'm done with that car. I know you guys don't want to see more content out of it because it is gone and done at this point. So where we are with this thing, now that we're back at the shop, we have the back looking solid. The middle is pretty much sorted, so now I want to work towards getting the engine bay figured out. Now, I don't want this engine bay to look like a photoshopped in real life version of a CRV that was plopped inside of an El Camino engine bay. I want it to look like an engine bay that at least makes sense aesthetically. I mean, it's gonna look crazy to see the Honda motor in here and whatnot, but I don't want it to be all gapped out and weird. So I wanna get rid of the old headlight mounts that we aren't using anymore, that needs to go. I wanna clean up the engine bay just a little bit. For example, this cruise control stuff. We don't need that where we're going. I'm even debating if I wanna leave AC in here because this is gonna essentially be like a race car, but will AC being in here make it cooler, better? It'd be cooler in here, but we'll figure all that out when we get there. But so let's get this engine bay cleaned up and start working towards finishing this thing, man. We had a couple slow weeks. Hopefully it's all uh hopefully it's a lot faster from here on out. Now one problem that we got is if you can see the front end is kind of just hanging there, real loose and whatnot. But we need to keep this radiator support because we are leaving this radiator support or I might bring the radiator up here, I have not decided yet. But as far as right here, where we are super wobbly, we got these holes, those need to go into something and what they need to go into is this guy right here. So those two holes are these two holes. So what I'm thinking is chop that off, chop that off, chop all of this off because this piece up top has the holes for everything that we got going on. I'm just going to have to figure out how to secure this into the structure that I add to the engine bay because we cut out a lot of structure. Now we need to start to put back structure that makes sense for everything else that we have going on. So let's just go ahead and get that chopped off, placed in there, then we will see what else we need to do.
So right now we have everything laid out and I just need to start to connect the dots. What I'm going to use is some bar stock. I'm just going to pick an area that seems to be strong from the CRV, build off that until we eventually meet with the El Camino front end. The main goal is we don't want that front to just be hanging off the doors. We want it to actually be mounted to the front end like a car should be in the end. That's a lot of ends. Let's keep moving. So right now, after quite a decent amount of work, we have some structural stuff going on. I have all this tubing running everywhere to kind of integrate the old engine bay to the new front end so that way everything is going to be nice and stout and sturdy. And as you can see, we are moving everything together. The front end is hanging on there. Now, all of this frame isn't even attached to the front end at all. Even though the front end is sitting right here, I just have a self tapper through there and a self tapper through there just to make sure it is going to support it and hold it. Eventually, I will run bolts in there. But what I'm going to do right now is if you can see these little guys, these tabs, I ordered these on Amazon. They are less than a dollar a piece. So I think I get 12 of them for $9 or so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run everywhere where I have a cross support. I'm going to put one of these guys right there, one right there. I will have to hold that one up when I get there. And then another one somewhere over here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we need to make the fenders detachable, they need to be stabilized, and also I need to make sure the way that I am installing them makes sense. So if I hooked it down like this, then I'd have to install it in a weird way. That's why I'm opting for a completely vertical, just so that way by the time all these tabs go on there, I can run a bolt through it in here, and in three spots we are going to be good. Now this bar could not run all the way back because we have the hood and that needs to come down in this area so I'll figure out something else for that or I mean maybe we can leave it wide open I'm not too worried about it we'll make it make sense next is we are starting to lay some really nice framework to put a flat piece of sheet metal right there as well as a flat piece of sheet metal over there and of course you guys know how I like to do stuff I want to throw dimple dies on each side because I think that looks really good and I know you're gonna say well what about water and all that debris coming up into the engine bay because as you can see we have the tire right there but I actually have a plastic splash guard that I kept from the CRV that'll bolt right in there. So we're going to have plastic preventing water from coming up in there. So let's get a piece of metal figured out, then we will weld that in there. Keep in mind, the front end is still going to be able to be removed, but all of this stuff that I'm adding will not be able to be removed. So we are, you know, filling in those gaps, and it is still going to be nice. And I like how it's coming along. No reason to slow down now.
Man, so right now we are really getting somewhere. Something that I am super happy with is these mounts right here. They are going to be plenty strong to hold my fenders. They hold the entire car together, really. Well, the entire car is attached to them. So this corner is looking solid. That corner is looking solid. Eventually, once this is all painted, it is going to look really nice, and I cannot wait for that. I also really like to pull out my bead roller, get some fancy panels going on. The dimple dies look really good. The bar stock is looking really good. Over in this area where the hinges have to go, I'm going to have to figure out how to cap that off nicely how to make it look right and we will do that eventually so unfortunately it is sunday morning as i am filming this we ran out of gas it has been quite a while since i have uploaded i apologize for that so what i want to do now is let's let's get the car out on the driveway because i like to kind of take a step back really look at it and uh see our progress thus far and also we can utilize that e-brake that i just put in there so let's get this guy out there not hit anything this is going to be a good test to see if the e-brake will work. All right, I'm 100% relying on the e-brake because I don't have any other brakes because they are not bled yet. Oh, I can already tell. Look what. Just like that, it is working perfectly. We have the doors functioning just like they should be. See, I spent a lot of time. I built up this area to make sure the doors aren't going to be wobbling off the car. They seem to be pretty solid now. They can shut. It. They can do everything that they need to do. A lot of this stuff takes a lot of time. Getting this guy in there, it's not super satisfying to watch, so I kind of need to just power through it, make sure everything's good. Is my mic on? My mic's on, we are good to go. Now coming up, look forward to a whole bunch of progress. We got rid of the Accord. That was a major distraction for me, getting that thing ready, coordinating with the driver, getting it shipped out, talking with the winner. So I'm happy that the winner won. I'm happy how the giveaway went and I'm happy to be done with it because now I can put my full attention on getting this thing done so if you like this video please leave a like share it with your friends leave a comment let me know what you think is your uncle's el camino a lot cooler probably at this point in the end i don't think so so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you on the next one i'm out